everybody, and welcome to the award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, your weekly go-to all things automotive place, along with Jeffrey, the tire man Zekin down there, and our chief engineer David Ainsley is here. I'm Don Armstrong. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's going to be a great show. we got two and a half hours, uh, or if you're listening. Whoa, 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 I thought it was four. I'm not, I can't make it for four. I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. Four hours? You've got to be kidding. How could I possibly? I know. It kind of stopped him, didn't it? Yeah. It yeah, it, it did. I had to think about that for a moment. I'm going to have to think about a lot of things okay. today. because we'll I'm a little, it. I, I actually am uh, trying to work on a cup of coffee. Good. Coffee's good. So <clears throat> I thought we would start with that. All right. So, um, hmm. Do we have uh, somebody is, on the uh, is uh, Well, we have Mike Wilson is uh, supposed to join us, and I see a title for Mike, but I don't see a camera from Mike. Oh, well, maybe, maybe maybe Mike's not going to let us see him. Um, but maybe what we can do is just put Mike on. Mike, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am here. Well, good, Mike. It's uh, good to hear from you. And uh, Mike, there by he, the there way, he is. There he is. Oh, diggity. he is the uh, president of the <laughs> Conroe Cruisers Car Club. Hey, and uh, it's good to uh, it's good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. How was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was great. I had a little family in town and uh, lots of turkey. Well, I see <laughs> that uh, you've moved the celebration out there to the garage. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the garage. Yeah, is everybody still sleeping over there? Uh, everybody's gone home. I just got my son left here. Oh, so I, I see. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so okay. So you packed up the car and they and they left, and you're still in the garage. Or is this yeah. your office in the garage? Yeah, that's kind of what it is. My my office garage. <laughs> I got you. Okay, very good. So tell me about the Conroe Cruisers Car Club. Well, we're a local car club here in Conroe. Um, we have you know, somewhere around 55, 60 members. Um, we put on two major car shows a year um, to raise f funds, to raise money for the uh, community. The, uh, lots of co several community or several organizations within the Montgomery County area. Yeah. And so tell me, uh, tell me about what, what is your next uh, get together, your, your next show or whatever it is that you're doing? Yeah, we, of course, 2020 has been challenging. Um, we had to cancel two of our car shows this year. So our fundraising um, efforts have, have been diminished. But um, our next show is scheduled for June of next year, Father's Day weekend. Um, we're putting on a, a, a pretty good sized car show. It'll be at the Conroe Outlet Center. Wow. Michael. Yes, as, as a matter of fact, I think that I attended one of those um, with the Corvair. Uh, I don't know whether you were there or not, but I had the uh, white '66 Corvair, and we yes, brought it I up remember, there. Uh, yes, and we you know, yeah, uh, that that was just a few weeks after our uh, when our car show was supposed. To Mike, Mike, what kind of vehicles are in the cruising uh, club? Um, we we allow, we we don't limit any. Uh, any vehicles we have we welcome anyone and and they can bring whatever car they have there's so you're not restricted on a year or, or, or no. a, a typical uh class no gms more fords whatever the case right right uh, we welcome everybody so i have to ask you what is that behind you over there with the fancy paint on it oh um <laughs> the the truck yes <laughs> Yeah, that's my 93 um, uh, Chevy Silverado Indy Pace truck. Wow. It's an Indy Pace truck. I did not know that they actually had an Indy Pace truck. Yeah, they, they, um, each year they, they make a few um, truck versions that do a lot of the... Um, uh, the grunt work at the speedway. The grunt work, yes, around the speedway. Right. Correct. Yeah. And you have you had it since it was new? No, I've only had it about a year. So you, um, you, you picked it up on the used market? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, it, other than the paint and the decal on the side of it, is there anything else that uh, has been applied to it? 
special oh, oh, shocks, uh, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, um, I, we, we added some 22-inch uh, wheels to it um, and uh, a dual exhaust. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much all stock. So were you looking for something like that, or this just happened to pop up and caught your eye and said, I'm, I'm going to buy that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm an Indy 500 fan, so if something pops up on the Internet like this, you know, I'm going to take a look at it. I got it. you. <laughs> yeah. Now, was that, did you find that locally? No, actually, I found it in Florida. It's a Florida truck. There you go. Yeah. So you didn't have, have to worry about rust issues or anything like that? No, no, it's pretty clean. How many miles did it have on it when you bought it? It had, had it has thirty four thousand miles on it. That's, That's all. It and what year yeah, again? Just 34, Nin- you said ninety three. Yeah, it's a ninety three. Wow. <laughs> wow, that that's pretty amazing. So clearly, somebody uh, put it in the garage and didn't drive yeah. it very much. That's true. Yeah, it's the engine bay is spotless. The interior is spotless. It's it's in a, a very nice shape. Do you drive it? Yeah, I take it to shows and. Um, Mainly just on weekends, I'll drive it. But um, I was going to yeah, say, but it's it not your daily time. driver. No, no. <laughs> wow, that's that's pretty neat. What is your daily driver? Um, I've got a, a, a Lexus. Yeah, well, of course yeah. you do, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a, a, a Lexus and an LS. So yeah, okay. Yeah. So this uh, is. I'm not, I'm, this is your toy that uh, you you clearly uh, cherish and and baby in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm one of those kind of car guys too. Yeah. yeah. I used to have an old Camaro that I drove like a hundred miles a year. Really? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. it's funny that a uh, '93 with that few miles that you could find something yeah. like that. Had it well, been on the market for a while when you found it? Um, I think just a few weeks. I don't think it had been on the market very long. Wow. Well, that, that's, quite the, uh, that's quite the find. So let's get back to the Conroe Cruisers Car Club. So you've got this <laughs> Father's Day event that uh, is coming up in 2020, and hopefully we'll be moving past our uh, lockdown with uh, coronavirus and that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and it's going to be at the Outlet Mall up there, uh, and that's actually north of the city of Conroe out there off of 45, correct? Yes, it's uh, north of north of Conroe, south of Willis. Yeah. So, so um, do you guys have a internet presence, uh, whether Facebook or w- whatever the case may be, that uh, if folks want to attend that event, that they can register and that sort of stuff? Yeah, we have um, a website, uh, ConroeCruisers.com, and we also have a Facebook page. Very good. All right. Yeah. Well, so. uh, it's great to talk to you, and we thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, please stay in touch with us and let us know how things are coming along with the, the Father's Day weekend uh, Conroe Cruisers get-together. All right. I sure will. All right. Well, we appreciate you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is Mike Wilson, president of the Conroe Cruisers Car Club. I did some quick math, and it's uh, like 1,900 miles a year since that vehicle is new. To today. Unbelievable. Yeah. I wonder, I should have asked him if he trailered it from Florida here or did he drive it? Well, that's cool. You know, he does did say he drives it to the shows. So, well, that's a that's a long haul. It'd be a good a shakedown. Show. Yeah. It would be a good shakedown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blown radiator hose <laughs> because it's just rotted off of the car. <laughs> it's so not roadkill. <laughs> no, it's not roadkill. That's for sure. All right. Well, shall we just move on and shall we just kind of ease on into our pre-owned car of the week? Sure, we could do that. Well, why don't we do that? Let me get my stuff. So Mr. Jeffrey Zekin is uh, tasked every week with coming up with a pre-owned car of the week. And we really don't limit him as to what it is, but we all kind of think that pre-owned car of the week should be something that you or I could go out and buy, right? either online or at a lot somewhere. It could be a first car, a second car, a daily driver, Kids a, a car, backup. Yeah. Exactly. Right. exactly. That sort of and thing. now that we're coming, we're, you know, the holidays and, and not necessarily going back to school. We're kind of in between on the going back to school or graduations and things. So the holidays are important. Uh, and I know David here, his, his sons have, you know, cool cars. 
So this kind of fits into that. This What we're doing uh, this week is a 2017 Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, this is a base model. This base model is an LT. Of course, you do have the LT, the RS, the SS, and the LT1s. This one here that we're showing is, is just a basic. This is just a plain Jane white. Uh, I like the color white. You can get that. In good accents. You know, you can dress them up I'm later very on. well familiar with the yep. white cars because yep. I happen to have that 66 Corvair that I put yep. some black racing stripes on. Yep. And it had a lot less horsepower than that V6. In, that was the in-wheel time machine. The in-wheel time yeah, machine, absolutely. yeah. And I assume that that has a V6. This they is all a, we'll get into that. It's a four-cylinder. Oh, this okay. one's a four-cylinder uh, inline turbo. Oh, okay. Shocking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this considered a uh, sports car. I consider it a midsize. Uh, it is a good-looking little car. And, of course, they came out in 2010. You know, that was the reintroduction of the Camaro. And at that time, I was with Pirelli when they did that. And Pirelli had the exclusivity for the tires on that particular vehicle. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So uh, there's another shot coming up with this. Um, so it's, it's just a base model. Like I said, you can see there's a little tag on the, on, the, on the fender there. Exterior options. You got the fog lamps, which a lot of these things that we'll talk about are, are options that you can add onto the vehicle. Uh, fog lamps, body moldings, rear spoilers, uh, body color bumpers, which you see there. Uh, you, you got the uh, inside, you've got the curtain airbags, you've got uh, knee airbags, and something else that uh, really impressed me. That's a 17? That's a 17. Wow. Okay. Something that impressed me was that it had uh, curtain airbags, you know, the side airbags, yeah. front and rear. Uh -huh. you know, and I didn't know that that was an option until in that particular model. I thought it was more of luxury, luxury cars or more of the exotic cars. I didn't know it was in just base models. So, which is pretty cool. You got your remote start. Uh, there's a shot of the interior there. Now, did they make a V6? They did. They yeah. did make a V6. This particular one, like I said, is a, uh, a four-cylinder inline uh, and you know turbo. That, and I have to comment on this, that sure. interior shot that you, that you had up there a second ago. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was really odd that they would put the AC vents down at your hand as opposed to up on the dashboard eye level or face level yeah. or shoulder level just did odd yeah. it's just odd to me but okay yeah it, it is what it is i guess um th the ride on these some folks think the ride is rough some folks think the ride is smooth and things like it's that. it's a camaro it's a camaro and this particular shot that uh, we're getting into this looks like your butt is in a bathtub it's like in a well uh-huh can i say that on the air yes you can okay <laughs> you did all right <laughs> it, it almost looks like one of those um the back seat of a police car where they've got you like in a bucket That's how would you know what the back seat of a police car <laughs> looks I, I, like i Jeff? know i know a policeman i do know yeah, a policeman uh-huh yeah. uh, probably <laughs> very well after that <laughs> nod on your head from his flashlight <laughs> and the plate that goes along with and it. the plate now you get back of your head <laughs> So this vehicle is a two-liter four-cylinder intercooled turbo. It's 275 uh, horsepower, 275 horsepower at 5,600 RPM. Uh, 295 on the torque, Newton meters, between 3,000 and 4,500. So that's that's there's a range there. This Wait, is so you know, wasn't it about 2017 that they started offering a, a four-cylinder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's why I picked this one. I picked the base, base just the most but I mean, low end. I don't think that they had offered a four-cylinder in the car before then, did it's, they? Uh, six cylinders. Six cylinders. Right. Was, yeah. V6 was right. what you could get, yeah. the 305 horsepower V6. Right. Exactly. Yep. Or the V8. But well, this, of course, this is an intercooled turbo. So it's, they stepped it up on the horsepower with adding the turbo because you know, it was pretty, pretty doggish. Pretty doggish. 22 miles per gallon in the city, 31 miles per gallon highway. Uh, you're looking at a 27 combined. Typical uh, ride and handling, stability control, ABS, brake assist, multi-link suspension. Uh, you're looking. You know, at seriously, all that car really needs is a set of tires and wheels. Yeah. In my estimation, yeah. if you put a good-looking set of tires and wheels on there, you don't need to do anything. Buff it out if you feel like it. Well, this is a pretty clean one, and you can find the clean ones, and you know, we'll get into that so far as what this has, you know, the multi-link suspension front and rear. Uh, this vehicle has 65,000 miles on it in that range, and you're looking between sixteen and $18,000, depending on what options it has. Now, this is a base, so you're going to be closer to the 17 range, 16, 17 range. Um, new, this vehicle was between 26 and 30, depending on how you optioned it. So I think it's a pretty good buy. 
I think it's a pretty good buy. Now, if you get into the SSs and the RSs and the yeah, lower right. mileage, you're going to get into the higher dollars, and then you got the, the Lingenfelter motors and the superchargers and yada, yada. Yeah. So it gets into that. Um, the the competitors of this are the Mustangs and the Dodges and, and uh, those performance ends, but you can also get the lower end and the, the uh, base models of those vehicles as well. I want to try to squeeze a straight six in it. You probably could. I bet you couldn't. Yeah. Too long. I had a 90 uh, GMC uh, extended cab that had a straight six in it. Of course, it was a four-speed. On really? the floor? On the floor, yeah. A four-speed on the floor. Yep. Wow. Big old long stick. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Kathy drove it too. Hey, did she? Yeah. Huh. It wasn't one of those rock crusher uh, no transmissions, no. was it? No, no, it wasn't. Okay. No. Well, uh, that that was a, a fun trip down memory lane fun for the trip. 2017 Camaro. Yeah. yeah. So go out and uh, check them out. You know, ten thousand dollars. Of course, it had sixty-five thousand miles on it. Right. Too. That's a little bit over my what I would go for you. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, a sixty-five for a three-year-old car—that's a lot of miles. It's a lot of miles, but it's a base. So you know, to forty or so. Yeah, you, know, you can find them either. You know, single owner. You can find them as rentals. Uh, oh God, things of that nature. You, ever, you, you know, my my dad. If I'm looking like I'm getting into a more recumbent position here, because <laughs> he is, because I, I, I am. I uh, I've been up a long time and I'm tired. Anyway, <laughs> um, so my dad liked the Oldsmobile. Cutlass. I, my dad had one. I had one. Everybody had one. Yeah, my brother had, had, one. Back I had in, one. Back in the day. I mean, and you know who else had one? Conrad had one. <laughs> yes. He did. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Well, my dad decided that he was going to buy one off of a rental car lot. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> it looked good, but it had that dirty carpet smell in it. Oh. So... That finally faded away after it was vacuumed about a hundred times, but and and shampooed. What was this but back the, up in in the, in the north? No, this was down here, and this happened to be one of those cars that had some sort of mysterious engine issue hmm. that it would just shut off. Wow, for no reason. That's and you, it was there was you know not at. 10 miles into after starting it or 50 miles or from the stoplight or what just for whatever reason no indication like it heated nothing, up or anything nothing that's because everybody that rented it redlined it <laughs> probably <laughs> so as much as they could oh god yikes name yeah. that odor name the odor <laughs> they, yeah name that odor mm -hmm. hmm all right well um and, and very interesting all right um you know, I had some things that I wanted to kind of mention while I was thinking about it. And I'll save the EV story for when Richard comes in. Not that I need anything for uh, Mr. Buzz Evangelist Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought that this was an interesting story that I would share with you guys. Most popular car colors. Oh. And this kind of fits in with what you just did. So, as opposed to boring you with all of the things uh, below, let's say, 0.7%, I won't even go there. But ranked colors, the most popular car colors are, starting from number seven, brown. Oh, I had a brown car. Oh, God. T I tell me that you had a brown car. I had a brown car, and brown I think Kathy, Kathy, Kathy I had a brown car. I have lost all faith. Oh had, no! Yeah, no, it was cool. It was actually a. It was an Oldsmobile. <laughs> was it? Was it a Cutlass? Yeah. It, yes, it was. I had one too. And I got, I got hit. <laughs> Kathy and I were on a date, and I got hit in the driver's side. Uh, we were looking at a home that my parents just bought. Yeah. And we were taking around. This is going to be, you know, the new place. And uh, I had a guy that was intoxicated hit me, and uh, I worked at a Cadillac dealership at the time. And, uh, and they got had a free painted. shirt too. <laughs> yeah, free shirt. And they painted it Cadillac chestnut brown. Yeah. It was already brown, but they upgraded the color. So, yeah, and Kathy had one. Kathy had a, uh, a Ford, uh, what was it, Taurus. I believe she had a Taurus. Was it brown, too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well. Moving on. <laughs> Jeff's, Jeff's house is painted orange on the outside, if that gives With you any green clue. stripes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, uh, the sixth most popular color, 
uh, ranked at a 9.0% share would be blue. Catherine now, they don't special, yeah. special, special, specify what color or tint the blue is. I had a dark blue Corvette. Oh, was that your show? No, your show was a red one, wasn't it? The one no, showed? no. Back in 77, the one that I had was dark navy blue about the color of your shirt. Kathy had an SHO that was blue. So uh, above the blue, ranked at number five, is, Green. drum roll, please, red. 10.3% ah. is the uh, share number. That's I had a number. red one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. You've no, had no. so many cars, you probably had one of every there color. There was one point in my life that uh, in five years I had five different cars. Great. How'd that work out for you? Sold them all for profit. Did you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And ranked at number four at 14.5% share is silver. I was always a big silver fan. I actually I had I had two silver cars. I did too. At number three, at 15.5% is gray. You see a lot of gray cars these yeah, days. Yeah, they had a, a silver. Mm -hmm. Close enough. Ranked at number two is black. Black. 23.2% ah. black cars. And ranked number one dun, dun, dun. at 23.9% is white. white. But, you know, white is a vehicle that is more visible to other drivers than the black. They say the lighter the color of the vehicle, you're more visible to other drivers and less chance of getting in a, a fender bender or mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you're just more visible. Um, now, if you want to go by state popularity, okay, mm -hmm. let's just drill down to Texas, shall we? I think I have a Texas in here somewhere. Yes, there it is. And the top color in the state of Texas is white. Black. White. White. Twenty five point three percent share. Does does that include all like the commercial white vehicles? Or? Top I guess. Top non gray scale color is in Texas ten point three percent black. Red. Oh. Uh, red. How those funny, are, isn't that? Those attract the police, though. They, 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 you arrest, would know that. Yeah. Yes, I would. Uh -huh. And then you get a back seat like they had in the Camaro. It was a rent car. <laughs> it was a rent car, and you got to take it. So Good you for had, you. he had the arrest me red. <laughs> the arrest me red. There you go. Those are the pumps. Oh. <laughs> I, he said that. I didn't. Mm. But he just beat me to the punch there this time. Go. That's all there is to that. That's as crazy as an Eskimo selling popsicles. It's kind of crazy like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a different kind of show today. Can it you is. tell? <laughs> I'm going to mark that one off my list. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I did want to remind everybody that uh, our show is uh, available for you uh, on, the, on the download on uh, podcasts. Not uh, the down low, but the down low. <laughs> the down low. It may be on the down low after this episode. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, and inwheeltime.com were streaming. Mm -hmm. Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, TuneIn, Google Podcast, and Podcast Addict. <laughs> Along with Pandora and Amazon. In Wheel Time, Car Show. So there you go. If you can't find us there, then you aren't looking hard enough. All right. Why don't we... Uh, at this time, uh, take a look at uh, what do you got? National racing shows, cruises, whatever. What do you what do you what do you got? Over I've got there? the uh, t t t this week in automotive history. No, not that. That's that's the one. No, I have. no, it's not. That's not scheduled for that this time. Okay, I don't have. That's all I got. Is that all you got? Yeah, that's all I got. I gave you a big stack of papers. Well, you did, but I don't think you looked through them. No, so, I didn't. Okay, well, I got this. I, I'll tell you what. No, those are these papers. We've got these all spread out. Okay. All right. Well, my mistake. I thought that I had distributed them evenly, but I guess I didn't. Well, let's take a look. All right. Well, while you do that, mm -hmm. I've got a little headline or two that I wanted to get in before the top of the hour. <clears throat> FedEx and United Parcel are running into a shortage of delivery vans during a record surge in package volumes. No surprise there. Urged by the couriers to purchase any vans they can scrounge up. Leasing companies are dipping into the used market. Conrad DeLong, are you listening to me? <laughs> you know, he had all sorts of problems with that Ford Transit, whatever that big bus thing is it, that he drives for, for work. Like five weeks. Yeah, oh yeah. He, he was the off road, the yeah. road for a month and a half mm -hmm. because the engine blew up in it. Well, here is your golden opportunity, Conrad, <laughs> to ditch that thing. 
pawn it off on UPS or FedEx or some Amazon, whoever's looking for them, because now you can get some top dollar for that used thing that you drive. According to Brendan Keegan, CEO of Merchant's Fleet, he says, if there is a cargo van out there, we're trying to buy it. Wow. There you go. Uh, that Merchant's Fleet provides vehicles to package delivery companies. It expects to have 15,000 vans out for lease at year end, up from 6,000 a year earlier. Huh. The van drought sprang, of course, from the pandemic, induced shutdowns at factories that build the high ceiling and box-like vehicles, uh, just as soaring e-commerce ratcheted up demand for home deliveries. FedEx and UPS don't expect the scarcity will hobble delivery capacity. Hmm. No, because they'll be knocking on your door at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Hey, I uh, got a package for you. Yeah. Great. Thanks for getting me out of bed. And can you give me a jump? <laughs> can you give me a jump? That's right. Uh, or uh, can you call the wrecker for Conrad's van? <laughs> we inherited it from somebody. And, yeah, it had 90,000 miles when we got it. Oh, Conrad had that. Yeah, That's what it is. Three different shops. Yeah. Uh, here's an interesting uh, headline here. Uh, do you own a Hyundai or a Kia? Well, U.S. units on Friday agreed to a record-setting $210 million civil penalty with U.S. auto safety regulators over the untimely recalls of 1.6 million engines for fire risks. They didn't get to it fast enough. Hmm. Like, you know, come on, recall it already. The thermal event thermal event. The settlement covers recalls in 2015 and 2017 for manufacturing issues that could lead to bearing wear and engine failure. Ooh, that's ugly. Hey, uh, that's like, here, just put a new engine in it. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's, not, that's not good. <clears throat> and, Jeffrey? Yes, sir? This is a story made for you because I know that you're a big Cadillac uh -oh. groupie. Yes. Cadillac dealers won't, who don't see a place for themselves in the luxury brand's all-electric future, can walk away with more than half a million dollars instead. Close the dealership down. Here, here's the half a million dollars. Go away. And you know that there'll be some Cadillac dealers that'll do that. There will, in, in smaller, uh, smaller demographics, I'm sure. Cadillac expects to be selling only EVs by the year 2030, as long as GM feels the market is ready. That's a GM line if I ever yeah. heard it. Yep. Some dealers, on the other hand, aren't ready to make that shift or to spend at least $200,000 on charges, chargers, tooling, and training that GM is requiring. They have until November the 30th, tick-tock, to decide whether they'd rather just get out of the business instead. I'm having anxiety already. <clears throat> Many offerings range from 300000 to upward of $500,000. Dealers who accept a buyout must agree not to discuss it publicly. Well, you're going to know when the place shuts down well, or takes ownership. Yeah. So you, oh, that must be but one But they're of them. not there anymore, so who you got to ask? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. They just went away. So you mm -hmm. can't badmouth them anymore, right? I guess so. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for this portion of the In Wheel Time show. We've got uh, the next portion coming up right after a quick break. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels and steering and handling enhancements to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck attitude today at TexasTruckWorks.com. Com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy a loopy tortilla breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, December 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all in one place. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a three-hour friends and family event. The Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 in Katy. 
Drag racer, car enthusiast, and loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, December 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at the Loopies in Katy. The In Real Time Car Show will be there too, and you're invited to join us. We'll see you there. <laughs>